It's March 1965. There was positive feedback from the RRR, which stands for Receive, Rehabilitate and Release. Catchy, huh? With Frank's persistence and dedication, the farm has successfully raised three foals. Mabel and her trusted community box have a few suggestions on what to name the new additions. Pebbles, Dino and Bam Bam, after the popular cartoon series The Flintstones. I suppose these species were brought back from nearly extinction. It just feels right. The RRR have a specific task, and it's one they've been keeping extremely quiet. There's a large herd of oryx expected to arrive any day. The mission? Simple. To breed. It's for the good of the oryx population. Frank is up to the challenge, but again, he'll need extra help from his brother Michael. Michael was good like that. A builder by trade, but was always around to help. With the herd of oryx on their way, it was only right to give them a large paddock with a suitable backstage area where these shy animals can retreat to. Someone who's not shy is Anna, Michael's daughter. Her parents split up when Anna was a baby and she has fond memories of the farm, particularly playing with Blue and Buddy, Aunt Mabel and Uncle Frank's two sheepdogs. Anna is currently trying to convince Uncle Frank that they should change the horse area to a ride-on paddock, something she's seen when taking trips to Blackpool Beach. But Frank keeps reminding her that these horses are special. Plus, the horses you see at Blackpool Beach are actually donkeys. The Oryx stable took no time at all to build, and with Badger Fresh Hay, it was ready for the new additions. Hello friends, welcome back to Planet Zoo, welcome back to Mabel Farm. So in today's episode we are building a habitat for the Oryx, as you would have seen for the introduction. So right now we are starting off building the hard shelter um, in the back here. I, this is an extremely basic building as you can see, so we're just trying to figure out the roof. I had a couple of um, different variations of this roof trying to get it all into position but the top bit here is what you've seen on my first episode for the horses um, so I'm trying to keep that consistency throughout my builds as well so all of the, the buildings are going to have this kind of nice um, overarching part as well and then th this is just the shutter doors. This took me a, a real kind of hot minute to try and figure all this out so I have edited it all out but there is parts of it where I just could not figure out the shape between the doors and also in respect to the um, the sliders here as well. So again, edited that out, but uh, you guys won't see all those cuts, thankfully. Um, so yeah, just putting a little bit more detail into the doors here. You can see that um, I am just like trying to get everything lined up, a little bit of ventilation as well. So this hard shelter was actually inspired by a real life shelter. Um, I went onto Zulix, which if you guys don't know what that is, it is basically a website that you can go on and there's loads of reference images of real life zoos, um, real life habitats. And you can basically just go into the search bar, put in any animal that you require and it'll come back with different backstage images. So here is the one that I took the reference from. So as you can see, this is for elephants, um, but I really like the backstage of it having these two shutter doors. Uh, it's not a massive um, area for the elephants either, but obviously it's suitable enough. And I just, I love that. I just thought I, I really like that realism. I do love janky style buildings, as if you are a follower of, of mine, you'll know that that's kind of the style that I like to go for. So real life zoos are fantastic, but they are very boring. Some of them can be very run down um, as well in terms of they'll just uh, have these paddocks, um, these kind of like sheds and stuff. It's nothing, uh, anything amazing to look at. Uh, so that's kind of been at the forefront of my mind while I've been building in Mabel Farm as well. So here's me just repopulating the uh, interior from the the horses uh, stables as well so we're just getting all these um mesh bits lined up i was kind of a bit concerned because of the oryx having these massive antlers if they would get them stuck uh, within that that um, mesh but we'll not think about that um and then yeah just putting a little bit more detail around the edges here so uh, again i just copied that 
that section from the uh, horses paddock and um, yeah we're just repurposing quite a lot of things within this zoo well this farm and I think that's okay because um, when you repopulate things and it gives a more consistent feel throughout your whole um, project so this is me just figuring out the backstage area again so I, I like the, the idea of there being concrete again based on the the reference images that I just showed you. So we've got some interesting uh, lines here uh, on the ground, which again, it's just little details like that that I just think kind of make your, your project stand out a little bit. Um, and it does make it look a little bit more recent, realistic. So I am really enjoying building the backstage areas. Um, I, I do kind of do it um, from time to time, but this one I'm kind of focusing more on it. Again, repurposing fences there. So I might actually put this one on the workshop in case anyone wants to, to use it um, because I am going to use it basically all over my zoo. So uh, also, if there's anything that you guys have seen me build and you just think, oh, that would be so awesome to have in my park. I would really like to, to have that. Let me know in the comments below and I will happily put it on the workshop. We do actually have the the horse habitat on the workshop uh, for you guys to download. I will say, however, that it is, um, how do I, how do I put this? It's uh, f not function, not functionable. Um, what's the term? Function over fashion. It's the opposite. It's fa fa fashion over function. <laughs> wow, that was an absolute handful to get out. But um, handful, mouthful. Uh, but basically, what I kind of do when I'm building things is, as I'm trying to make it a little bit more realistic, um, I'm trying to get the right size of my project, and then from there I'll um, I'll kind of design it a bit more. So sometimes you'll find, especially with the horse one, that they can't actually go into the stables. But with obviously this one, the shutter doors are absolutely massive, so they can happily come in and out here. So little bit of um, realistic watering facility here and they don't actually use this I think I've seen maybe one um, Orax come down and take a drink I was kind of hoping that they would come down more and, and drink from it we're making a little bit grubby as well by putting in these decals I think they are probably my favorite item in planet zoo which is, is quite hilarious uh, and then rocks and foliage now what I have done is I have cut a, a very large chunk of me putting down the foliage and the rocks just because it's not that interesting to look at. So I have spared you the, the grind of me putting down different uh, foliage pieces as well. So uh, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I am enjoying making it. I think the next habitat we're going to do is possibly going to be for a mix between meerkats and fennec foxes. Um, I do have obviously a story for that as well. The whole project's been scripted out, so I'm excited to be building that one. So that's what's coming up next on the channel. Um, we kind of did start building it on a live stream, but to be honest, I think I might just rip that down and, and start again. Um, probably similar building style, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get to that, that section of the project as well. So um, we're now coming up very shortly to the end of this video. So um, I will be hopping into the live part of the, the project. Um, I won't spend as, uh, you know, a, a hefty <laughs> amount of time showcasing, but I thought it would be just nice to, to slow things down a little bit and you guys get to see things in real time and I can talk about more of my thought process as well. Uh, so this section here I am building for our guests and the idea was I was going to have two paddocks basically that it was going to be a bit of a, a feeding section as well. Kind of like a petting zoo but I didn't think the Oryx was very suitable for that kind of vibe because of their antlers. So again, we're just making this custom roof. I always say to myself not to make custom roofs because they um, they don't actually take that long. It's just, it can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, but I really had to put a custom roof in this one just because I wanted this kind of janky, the, the tiles were falling off and then a bit of grunge as well. 
And honestly, it's my favourite thing to do in Planet Zoo is to make something pretty and then grunge it up. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, that's enough from me and I'll talk to you guys in the real time tour part very, very shortly. Okay guys, welcome to the real time tour part. We are just going to get straight into it. So like I said before, this part here is, they don't actually come down to it and use it, even though when we go to our little heat map here, they can get into it, they just choose not to use it. So I know I said before that I was considering putting this on the workshop, um, or if you wanted it on the workshop, then let me know in the comments. I'm actually just going to throw a, a habitat barrier around it and um, I'll pop it up. So feel free to use it, feel free to put whatever animal that you want inside. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be for the Oryx, but here we go. They're all about to just get fed, which is nice. Um, so we'll just hop inside this building here so you guys can have a, a bit of a, a, a 360 tour. So we have this like section up here that's been cut out and put the lights in. Obviously these are red lights as well. It's better for the animals. I have kept in these um, little lamps as well just for for the keepers there there's our keeper at the back there about to go and feed these ones but we're going to change it back to daytime there we go they're all getting fed beautiful beautiful um so the backstage area very very basic just two paddocks here they've got these sliding doors obviously that they can shut them off if they wanted to clean inside or, or, or separate them or, or whatever else. We do have the keeper's gate as well um, in this section here. But yeah, like I said, I'll go away and throw a null bar around all this and put it onto the workshop so you can do whatever you like with it. We've also put in some very, very basic staff facilities here as well. I'll include these in the, the workshop. Um, I didn't necessarily put in the, the speed build of me building these because again, it is literally just a a very very boring building but i do love love like seeing all of the interiors and in that um we've got some lights if we go around the back here for our staff facilities um i have put in some like picnic benches they don't have an umbrella under this one so if the staff wanted to come out and um you know have their break outside and um and look at the, the pallets <laughs> which is not the most ideal thing uh, to do so this is kind of like a dumping ground slash like oh you know here's some picnic benches that you can come and chill out on um but yeah we'll just go away and fly over the top and come back down again the building itself not not massive i think it works quite well i uh, really wish that they would use this but over on, on this section here so you can see i've put in the the grass path which i absolutely love from planet zoo and then over here we do have this section which is supposed to be more so for the guests so we do have one um, over there but I thought we'd have another one up up here just to make it a little bit more interesting I did kind of initially have this idea that you know they would use like this back area and they have it as a pet and zoo like what I said in the the speed build um but i've uh, just decided not to to go down that route and just make it this like kind of nice open grassy area as well um so this section again totally totally run down in my classic style we've got um this section here that's you know a bit broken we've also got the tiles that are are on the floor as well um we've got the the information board I was tempted to put in a little bit more information but honestly I couldn't think of anything and then around the back as well we've got a little ventilation bit just for the monitor so it's just that kind of like little attention to detail that I was thinking about and as you guys know um are you I actually never mentioned it but this one's on a bit of a wonk so when you go to night time you can see that I've taken the color down on it it's still actually on but it's not as bright so it's kind of just like falling over a little bit um which is i just love that kind of geeky geekiness about it all but yeah that's our um little information stand as well i should probably put more information stands um around the front of the paddock as well probably put in um, a couple of them here might do that in a in a live stream um oh my gosh i was like they're using it they're actually using it yay <laughs> That is amazing. 
this is the first time that I've built this that they have actually went inside. I am thrilled. Look at him. Swim, little friend, swim. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so glad that we've captured the magic. So if we just spin around just for a bit of um, understanding of where we are, we do have the, the meet the horses here. Um, this was what I was saying in one of them. I do have the father to Bam Bam Pebbles and Dino, and Debbie's the mother to Bam Bam and Dino, and uh, Susan's the mother of Pebbles. So that was what I was talking about in my my build in this one when I, I wasn't trying to reveal it because they they kept on breeding. They were breeding like crazy horses. So they are in here now as well. So they are quite happy doing their thing. And uh, yeah, that is the update of Mabel Farm. If you'd like to see more from Mabel Farm, check out this video here and I'll catch you in the next one. So until then, take care.